Hello everyone. Welcome to Black Hand Blast number three. This is not the podcast, so if you're tuning into this thinking you're seeing a podcast, of course those are normally on Tuesday nights. This is a Monday night, although we have had them on special nights. It was kind of funny, a gentleman that works with me, who's about uh, probably 12 years older than me, peeked his head in here right before I went live about five minutes ago and said, Buddy, I hate to tell you this, I know you're getting older, but tonight's Monday night, he goes, because they all enjoy when I come in here and do a podcast, even though they don't know the names and stuff, they hear Siri and all this stuff, plotets and different names, Driftwoods, and they're like, man, how do you keep track of all that stuff? So it's just funny uh, when you see people that are not in the horse business, you know, at all, uh, look at stuff like this. So, And of course, the Jackson's family, they really support uh, our podcast here and these live broadcasts. They were actually a sponsor this year at the Congress show, a $500 sponsor. They will be coming up here in July. I uh, can't wait to see everybody there. I'll be there a couple different days uh, for that event. So tonight we're just going to talk for a few minutes. Hopefully people uh, join on and see this. If not, you can uh, join later. Uh, but I've been talking about, um, I'm going to switch screens here and show you who wants to be a POR? So that's an idea I had, and I had this logo made uh, by Katie out in Oregon, made this for me. Uh, she does a good job. I paid her to make some logos for me for the cutest baby contest and a couple of those posters. And then I came up with this idea. Every time I throw an idea at her, within a few minutes, she throws something back at me, and it's usually what I like. And then she goes on and, and does it pretty good. So. Uh, uh, this is a cool design. Of course, this falls under the trademark and all that that I have permission for uh, with this experiment. I had the permission from the executive secretary a few years back who was Joyce Bannister at the time, and I did a written proposal. So just keep that in mind if you go to do merchandise or anything with POA or Pony of the Americas or different. there's some other different things too that are trademarked. I was actually on the board when that was passed, so I know all about that. Uh, it's not that complicated. Most businesses and companies have to protect themselves. Uh, so that's what POA and POAC did as well. Uh, so this is covered under uh, all that permission and stuff. If anybody was wondering, no one's asked, but I'm just throwing that out there. Because uh, I had somebody say, hey, put that on T-shirts. Well, I don't know if we'll do that. It's just for the game show. Shane Jackson downloaded some music for me for tomorrow night. A bit of 70s music there for the game show, so we'll see how much we use that tomorrow night. So we also downloaded a thing. One of our little slogans here is come join the family. I think six different POA people have bought vehicles from Jackson's Auto Family over the years, so that's pretty cool. I'm proud of that. And uh, here's our little logo. Come join the family. Let me turn it up a little. Come join the family. So if you're needing a new vehicle and you're around Enid, you know, come and see me. Of course, we ship to financing and delivery is always available. We have over 30 lenders we use, and we have a, a Chevy store as well, Chevy, GMC, Buick, and, of course, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram here in Enid. And uh, we also sell quite a few pre-owned cars. So tomorrow night we have uh, two different guests. They'll both be contestants. I think some people are getting a little confused. You're not competing against each other. If you've ever watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, that's what I'm copying, Who Wants to Be a P.O.A. I, I loved that show when it came out in the late 90s, Regis Philbin. It, uh, like some people say it helped save ABC, but I watched it every night it was on. I'd go do chores and whatever I had to do. It usually, usually it was on in the winter when it first started, and then uh, we'd all sit around and watch it. So uh, there's usually 15 questions. There's uh, three questions to each level. There's five levels, and as that show went, the first questions were pretty easy. Sometimes they were even a little stupid or, you know, dumb because they were really easy, but they tried to make them funny. Uh, mine might not be quite that easy, but I tried to make them funny with some of the answers. Some of the answers can be easy. Of course, they're all multiple choice, so all 15 questions will be uh, four answers. And I won't say A, B, or C, but they are all listed on there, A, B, or C. I'll just read the question and then the four answers. I also have... Uh, a cam that'll probably get a little better right now is going to be the first time you ever see my question cam and there it is this question won't be a question tomorrow night because it's just a question I made up for the show tonight so which prefix did Judy Katzenberger start now this is a good example here that why I want to do, the, do this because I don't want people to answer the questions people that are watching you're actually going to be two of the lifelines 
So the lifelines will be 50-50. There will be two of those, just like on the show. So there will be, of the four qu answers on there, two will be removed. So we'll go back to that. So let's say somebody didn't know this answer. So I could remove JK, and if I wanted to be a jerk, I'd remove JKA. So then that would leave JNJ and JN. Of course, the correct answer on this is JN for Judy and Norm. Uh, all the other ones are prefixes. So this question, you know, some of these questions can be easier or hard depending on the other wrong answers. Like if I would have put some obvious wrong answers on here, but the JK is to throw you off for Judy Katzenberger. JK, kind of the same thing. And then JNJ is real close to JN. So this would could almost be considered a tough question. And then it depends on when you got involved in POAs, how long you've been involved. If you grew up in the 70s, 80s in the Midwest, this is an easy question. Uh, if you're paying attention now even, they're still breeding POAs in Wisconsin. So the questions are gonna be based like this and they're gonna get harder as they go, like I say. So the 50-50 will be, I'll literally remove the paper because I'm not that tech savvy. I'll cross out two wrong answers and then I'll put it back. You get to use two 50-50s and then there's two ask the audience. So, and you can use them together if you have to, but I wouldn't do that. I would try to use them for four questions. Now the ask the audience is just like it sounds, except you guys will be viewing. That's why I don't want anybody to type out the answer like right away, somebody, I know there'll be people watching that'll go, oh, Katzenberger's, that's JN, and type JN. Well, then that just wrecks the show because if the contestant's watching, they're going to see that. So, and please don't try to look it up when we do ask the audience. Just try to guess, and I will read off the answers. I won't say people's names. I'll just say, well, we have a couple people said this, a couple people said that, and uh, this, this is what they're leaning towards. So participation's going to be a big thing tomorrow night. Hopefully... 30, 40 people are watching live. If 10 people's watching live, oh well. If one person comments and nobody else, uh, then you know that's gonna be the audience participation and that's what I'm gonna tell the contestant. That well, the audience says we had one person say this. Uh, so our two uh, contestants tomorrow night, thank you so much for the volunteers. Is gonna be Kara Dembski from Wisconsin who grew up in Wisconsin, of course, and uh, I think she lives in Wisconsin now. I know she lived in Minnesota for a while. Uh, she showed Campbell's Birdie was her main POA when she graduated, and uh, they raised some POAs by her. Uh, Linda and Bob are her parents. They're very good supporters of my podcast and the Facebook, uh, the Black Ant and Beyond uh, Facebook history group. They're always commenting on there and liking stuff, so I'm glad Cara uh, volunteered. The second volunteer is Jackie Guthrie. Of course, Jackie's one of our historians in the POAs. Uh, so I did gear these questions kind of both towards these people uh, because I knew they grew up in the Midwest and they both, Jackie basically grew up in POAs. She was in POAs as a, a young lady, young woman with her daughter, and she's been in it her whole life. So she knows a lot of history. Of course, they both know history from around the country, uh, but they are they do know a little bit more Midwestern stuff. If I had somebody from Oregon that say they said they wanted to be uh, a contestant, I would throw in some more questions about maybe a stallion in the Pacific Northwest or an association or a club or something uh, that started back there. So same way if somebody from Connecticut or New Jersey said they wanted to join, I would gear the questions a little bit different, you know, just to make it fun and to keep it going. So I don't want people to get out in one or two questions, but also, it's a challenge to get to number 15. I will tell you the last two questions on both uh, of these. There, I've got 30 questions queued up, ready to go, 15 for Carr and 15 for Jackie. The last two are tough. They're very tough questions. So it's no shame, not, nothing to be ashamed of if you don't get them all right. Just like the game show, if everybody won every night, it'd be kind of boring. So if somebody goofs on the fourth or fifth question, oh well, and then the next person might run the table or go to 13, that's what it's all about. I do hope we get some more uh, contestants. So I know some people wanted to do it and they have time restrictions or their schedule just won't allow them to have stuff going on Tuesday nights. Uh, if you don't know a lot about history, that's okay. I mean, one of the, some of the questions are about modern things and some of the questions can be more about rules and shows and stuff like that. These two tomorrow night will both be more geared towards 
like the national show and who was registered when and stuff like that. So it'll be more breeding questions and more history on uh, end shows and who won this, uh, what year did this start, things like that. So I hope you guys tune in tomorrow night. Uh, again, uh, if you, uh, you can tell people to watch this little black hand blast. This is the third one we've done. I did one in uh, Indianapolis and then I did one in, uh, I think here just to remind somebody about something that was going on. So that's what this is. Occasionally I like to jump on and just do that. Usually I don't do it from the studio. This is the first one I did from the studio. Uh, but I had my new toys tonight, the come join, come join the family. And of course I always got my, so if somebody's got a tough question, that's what you're gonna hear tomorrow night. And then if they get one right, we might do a, <laughs> yeah. So we'll have fun. So hopefully we get a lot of people watching tomorrow night. Tell all your friends, all your POA uh, people, alumni, stuff like that, people that are still active. You have to be a member of the POA History Group. Uh, Black Hand and Beyond is the name of the podcast. POA History Group is the name of the uh, group on POA. So you just ask to, uh, somebody can invite you or you can ask to join and then I accept the request as long as I know it's a POA person and not just some bot or somebody uh, trying to scam somebody. So uh, let's see, did I cover everything? So the five levels is going to be just, I won't mention it much, but the, I just wanted to name them so we'd have levels. So it'll be 9 and under, 10 through 13, 14 through 18, 19 and over, and then the last three is considered a professional equestrian. I just did that. If that hurts somebody's feelings or somebody don't like that, I didn't mean to. I'm just saying we're going up. Like as you go up, up in age, it gets tougher. I realize sometimes 10 through 13 is a lot tougher than something else, but that's just so we know the levels. I could have did uh, ROM or Supreme or different levels like that. Um, so uh, we will have prizes too. I don't know. Though some of them might just be gag prizes. Uh, I'll have to ship cars to Wisconsin. Jackie, I'll probably see in Tulsa, so that'll be easy. And uh, anyway, um, again, help help us tomorrow night. Join live tomorrow night. It should be around 6.30. You know how that works. It's usually around 6.30 live right here on uh, the POA History Group. So I've chatted for 12 and a half minutes. That's longer than I thought I'd do. Again, I'll show you the question cam there you go so that can't, question won't be tomorrow night but there will be fun questions like that some of the answers on the very easy ones will be uh, some of the answers will be funny and uh, so it will be worth tuning in for that so we also have the overlay there that we added who wants to be a POA so and then don't forget there's our music so we will have our opening credit music tomorrow night, like we always do, uh, the, the POA song. Uh, we will play that in the beginning, uh, but then we will play this music off and on just to lighten up your mood. So I think of Austin Powers or something when I hear this music or a 70s game show. So that's what we were going for. So, All right, everybody. Thank you for watching this short Black Hand Blast. See you tomorrow night for, I believe it's episode 63 of uh, Black Hand and Beyond, my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. And it'll be the first edition of Who Wants to Be a POA. Thank you, everybody.